If you haven't done so, make sure you pause the video and try to answer this question on your own first before listening on. We are asked to determine the x and y components of the net electrostatic force on particle 3. We want to recall that the electrostatic force between two charged particles is given by Coulomb's law, in which we have the electrostatic force equaling a constant multiplied by the magnitude of one of the charges, the magnitude of the other charge, and then divided by the distance between them squared. We can see from the diagram that particle 3 will have three different electrostatic forces acting on it. It's going to have the force exerted from particle 1, from particle 2, and also from particle 4. We can arrange those three forces into a table. So the first force that we'll calculate is the force on particle 3 exerted by 1, then we'll do the force on particle 3 exerted by 2, and then the force on particle 3 exerted by 4. Each time we're going to be using this formula. So for the first force, we're simply going to plug in the value of k, which is 8.99 times 10 to the power of 9. And it has a rather funny unit of Newton meters squared per coulomb squared. So that's the value of k. Then we're going to multiply by the magnitude of the charge of particle 3. Now, the question tells us that particle 3 has a charge of 200 nanocoulombs. So we'll have 200. Now, nanocoulombs is a power of 10 to the negative 9. And so that would put it into the standard unit of coulombs. Then we need to multiply by the magnitude of the other charge, which was particle 1 in this calculation. Particle 1 has a charge of 100 nanocoulombs. And a we will divide by the distance between them squared. From the diagram, we can see that the distance between particle 1 and 3 is a. The question tells us that a is 5 centimeters. We need to convert that into the standard unit of meters, so we simply multiply that by 10 to the minus 2, and that'll get it into meters, and we don't forget to square it. And when we crunch this down in our calculators, we should get about 7.192 times 10 to the minus 2 newtons. Let's see if we can squeeze this in here. Now we are going to perform a similar calculation for the force that particle 2 is exerting on 3. We just have to be careful about the distance between particle 2 and particle 3. So let's draw that distance on our diagram. It would be represented by this red line right here. And we can see that we have formed a nice right triangle. The two legs of the right triangle are both A. Now we might know that in the special case of an isosceles right triangle in which the two legs have the same length, the hypotenuse has a value of one of the legs times the square root of 2. So this distance right here would be A radical 2, and that's going to be the distance we need when we plug into Coulomb's law for the force that 2 is exerting on particle 3. So let's go and set up that calculation next. So here is that setup. And we just want to note that, again, we're using the magnitude of the charge on particle 3, which was 200 nanocoulombs. This time we're using the magnitude of the charge on particle 2. Let's not forget that although particle 2 is negatively charged, its magnitude is still 100 nanocoulombs. And then again, for the distance between particles 2 and 3, we have included the square root of 2 in that distance. Remember, the distance between those was a times the square root of 2, and we have a filled in as 5 times 10 to the minus 2, and then we have the square root of 2 there. So we'll pick up our calculators and process this calculation next. And when we do that, we get approximately 3.596 times 10 to the minus 2 newtons. So that represents the force that particle 2 is exerting on particle 3. We've gone ahead and set up the final Coulomb's law calculation. This time we're using the magnitude of the charge on particle 4, since we're calculating the force that 4 is exerting on 3. Remember that, again, although particle, has, particle 4 has a negative charge, its magnitude is 200 nanocoulombs. And then the distance between particle 4 and 3 is simply the A value. We don't need the square root of 2 in that calculation. So once again, we pick up our calculators, and we figure out that this time the force is 1.438 times 10 to the minus 1 newtons. 
Now, we recall that the question wants us to break these three forces into their x and y components, but before we can do that, what we want to do is draw in the three forces whose magnitudes we've already calculated. So let's go back and look at the force that particle 1 is exerting on 3. Now, we remember that particle 1 has a positive charge. It's positive 100 nanocoulombs. And particle 3 also has a positive charge. It was positive 200 nanocoulombs. We know that when two charges have the same sign, they would repel one another. And that means that particle 1 is going to be pushing particle 3 downward. So we'll draw a downward force to represent the force on particle 3 exerted by particle 1. What we want to notice is that that force is pointing exclusively in the y direction. Notice it's not pointing at all in the x direction. That means that the x component of that force is 0, and the y component, because it's pointing down, will have a negative value. And the value itself will be the value we had determined earlier, the 7.192 times 10 to the negative 2 newtons. We could move next to the force that particle 4 is exerting on 3. Let's recall that particle 4 was negatively charged. And so when we have two charges of opposite signs, then the force will be attractive. So that means that the force that particle 4 is exerting on 3 is going to be pointing to the right because it is an attractive force. The two particles are being pulled together. Notice that force, which we can label F34, is pointing exclusively in the x direction. And that means that the y component of that force will be 0. Further, it's pointing in the positive x direction. So we will have a positive x component, and the value will be this 1.438 times 10 to the minus 1 newtons. So far, so good. What will be a little more challenging is to find the x and y components of the force that 2 is exerting on 3. Now, we recall that charge 2, or particle 2, was negatively charged, so we can put a negative sign right here. Again, charge 3 is positive, so there's going to be another attractive force there. That means that particle 3 will be pulled in this direction. So there is the force that we can label F32. The challenge here is that this force will have both an X and a Y component. Now, we've come down here and have redrawn the force that 2 is exerting on 3. The x component is going to be pointing in this direction, the positive x direction, and then the y component would be pointing upward in the positive y direction. We basically want to form a little right triangle in order to figure out these two components. Now, we will notice that the x component is adjacent to this angle right here. We are expected to know that because this figure is a square, that this angle will be a 45 degree angle. So we know that for sure. Again, the x component is adjacent to the 45 degree angle, and so because it's adjacent, we use the cosine function to obtain its value. So the x component will be F32 times the cosine of that 45 degree angle. The y component is opposite of that 45 degree angle, and because it's opposite, we will use the sine function to determine its value. So we take F32 and multiply by the sine of 45 degrees. Now what we'll do is pick up our calculators and we're going to do F32 times the cosine of 45 as well as times the sine of 45. And when we do that, the x component and the y component both turn out to be about 2.54 times 10 to the minus 2 newtons. And the reason in this case that the y and x components all are, are both the same value is because the cosine and sine of 45 have the same value. So the x component, again, is pointing in the positive direction, so that'll be positive. The y component is also pointing in the positive direction because it's pointing up, so that will have a positive value. So we'll plug those two values in for the x and y components of F32. Finally, to get the total x and y components, we simply add the components in the x direction and add all the components in the y direction. So we'll pick up our calculators and we're going to add these three components for the x and then we'll add these three components for the y. And the final answers in scientific notation are shown on the screen. So right here is the final total x component and here is the final total y component. 
it might be more strategic or more sensible to put them into their decimal form. So here is the final x component of the force on particle 3, and here is the final y component of the force on particle 3. Thanks for taking the time to watch this rather long video. If you enjoyed it, please click the subscribe button. You are welcome to send in a picture or text of your question to the email address on the screen, and I'll do my best to post the answer to it on YouTube.